Hi, I'm Daphne Richards. This week's question comes from Laura, who wants to know why her rock rose, Pavonia lasiopetala, which has been in her garden for years and has pink flowers, suddenly seeded out with white flowers. For years, this plant has been a standout in her garden, and it generously self-seeds. So last spring, she moved three of the seedlings to brighten up a semi-shaded area, and one of them bloomed pure white. So what could have caused this, and how can she propagate it to generate more of these gems? Well, Laura, the answer is in genetics. White flowers are actually recessive in rock rose, with pink being the most common color. But occasionally, the genes cross through pollination in such a way that both parents contribute to the recessive white flowering gene, instead of the pink flowering one. And the way to propagate and protect the white flowering plant is to keep that plant alive, which means protecting it from winter cold. The recessive white flowering gene may or may not appear again anytime soon in your seedlings, but the plant that produces white flowers should now always produce white flowers. You could also isolate the white flowering plant, perhaps in a container in a greenhouse, and pollinate it with its own flowers, which would give you a better, although not 100%, chance of producing more white flowering seedlings. The key would be complete isolation though, since you wouldn't be able to protect the plant from stray pollen from the normal rock rose any other way. And even though there would be no way of knowing if the seedlings would ultimately have white or pink flowers until those were actually visible, this sounds like a fun experiment and worth the effort to get more of these plants. Our plant of the week is Texas persimmon, Diosporus texana, also called black persimmon due to the color of the ripened fruits. Viewer Lamar Hankins and his wife sent in these pictures from their naturalized trees on their one acre lot. Some are growing under their cedar elms and live oaks. This wonderful little native tree is a beautiful and simply striking in the landscape. It has a beautiful pale gray bark that begins to flake off once it reaches maturity, much like a crepe myrtle. Although I called it a small tree, it can actually get quite large with adequate water and sunlight, up to 20 feet tall. But Texas persimmon could just as easily be referred to as a shrub, especially if used as an understory plant. Since it does perform well under other trees, it makes a good choice for potentially challenging shady areas of your yard. It's amazingly drought tough, surviving even the toughest of hot, dry Central Texas summers on very little supplemental irrigation. It's also a great wildlife plant, providing those with food, with those gorgeous black fruit, and shelter for birds and small mammals. But if you prefer less of a wild look, you can prune Texas persimmon to raise the canopy and make it less shrubby. But be aware that there are both male and female plants, so if you want the fruit, you need to purchase a female. But if you'd rather not attract wildlife and clean up the mask, ask the nursery for a male plant, although those are less commonly found. But the fruit is also edible for humans. Lamar also shared with us that recently when his uncle didn't have any mayhaws for the traditional family jam, he came up with a recipe for jam that tastes just like blackberries. And if you have a fruiting Texas persimmon or know someone who does, you can find that recipe on our website and start your own family jam making tradition. Thanks, Lamar. To do this week, look for bare root fruit trees in your local nurseries. We'd love to hear from you, so please visit klru.org ctg to send us your questions and plants of the week from your garden. Mm -hmm.